We are here today with Lord Dominic Johnson, the United Kingdom Minister of State for Business and Trade. And today we are going to delve into the complexity of the financial service sector. And also, we are going to explore the current and forward-looking trade and investment strategies of the United Kingdom. Good morning. Well, thank you very much for having me. What a, what a, what a great opportunity. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It's such a great honor of me to My be honor. interviewing the Lord. Well, thank you. You can call me Dominic, please. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just here to sell, sell the UK okay. uh, and to get better relationships between the UK and Thailand in terms of investment. So what's your strategy on that, selling the UK? So a number of things. First, you've got to go out and tell people how phenomenal the UK is as a destination for investment. Secondly, the government, so the organisation I work for, is absolutely determined to make us the number one investment destination mm -hmm. in the world for investment. And the third is to talk about the opportunities. You know, clean energy, life sciences, deep tech, AI, property. There's a whole range of opportunities. And what's exciting, and the reason why I've been loving my trip to Bangkok the last couple of days, is how many Thai companies are investing in the UK or want to invest in the UK. Oh. So yes. What about the UK side? Are there any interest in coming to invest more in Thailand? And UK companies love working here. Johnny Walker, so Diageo, celebrating so much. Uh, the, 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 best way, the best way to start a day, uh, 100 years <laughs> Uh, in Thailand, uh, organizations and um, banks like HSBC, I think have been here for 135 years, Standard Chartered. And what's really exciting also are some of our big pharma companies like GSK, AstraZeneca and so on, you know, investing in Thailand, creating drugs, so you know, inventing new medicines to make us healthier and happier. Yeah. What are the key alluring points of investing in Thailand? Oh, well, that's a great question. I mean, there's lots. Uh, first, you've got a phenomenally bright population who, who are hardworking and produce. You've got You've got a great history of business and commerce. You know, our relationship in commerce terms goes back hundreds of years. Um, you're one of the centres for advanced manufacturing, which is something that we are also um, pioneering, uh, re-pioneering in the UK. Um, and, uh, and the great cultural links. You know, you know, you know, you know the UK well. Thousands of you have been to school in the UK, been to universities in the UK. Yeah. You know, you, you, you own some of our best football teams. You know, Formula One, uh, Selfridges. You know, the relationships are deep. So that's very important, actually, because I think when people look to make an investment. Um, reducing risk is a key yeah. component to that. So knowing the economy is sound and strong and you can get good people, but also that there's an element of trust, that's very, very important when it comes to making those long-term decisions. Because UK has an age on that, because I think most of people here are Anglophiles. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, many of us in the UK are Tyrophiles, and a million of us come every year to holiday in this great country. I mean, that's just phenomenal. Yeah. So let's delve a bit more on the global scale. Uh, what are some of the key challenges for trade and investment in this era of tremendous uh, global crisis? Yeah, the, it, it's, it's always difficult making investments, uh, really in any period, um, and this period is no exception. And I think uh, predictability and consistency in terms of uh, you know, investment environment is very important. As I said earlier, you know, the concept of trust is very important, but also sort of you know, a desire to create new products and new technologies. And I know what the Prime Minister is doing here in terms of liberalising the economy is really relevant when it comes to our companies wanting to invest in Thailand. Uh, a desire to pioneer a new phase of sort of sustainable energy revolution, which is crucial if we're to save the planet, frankly. That's yeah. probably the biggest crisis of all, but also an enormous economic opportunity. And then in new technologies, you know, we're, we're going to have an amazing and exciting time with AI and how that's going to right. affect our lives. You know, as Politician, I might be disintermediated by a computer at some point yeah. uh, in the future. Uh, but at the same time, you know, that, that causes stresses and strains on populations too. So investing in, you know, deep tech, data centers and so on. These are all the sorts of things actually that both uh, governments are pushing hard and both economies are doing, UK and Thailand. It's a very challenging time for Thailand in navigating this, you know, landscape of changes in AI and technological advancement. Thailand is a bit behind in this sense. What are some of the plans that UK see to help Thailand achieving, you know, more level infrastructure in terms of tech? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I actually think Thailand's got, got some, has made some huge advances when it comes to advanced manufacturing. Thailand's one of the leaders uh, in the world. It's also a very phenomenal international uh, investor. I would say the one really exciting area for collaboration is on uh, the clean energy um, mm. universe. So the UK has been the global leader in offshore wind. We're now developing floating offshore wind. 
it, this sounds easy when you talk about it. It's enormously complicated. You've got these uh, wind turbines that are like 200 meters high. They're bigger yeah. than the Eiffel Tower. The wingspan are like 400 meters. Yeah. I take my dog for a walk. That's as far as I walk my dog. And this is one span of a, of a, of a, of a you know, of a propeller. So much. It's incredible. So learning how to do that and then transferring that technology to Thailand is, is a really good example of where we can build stronger partnerships. And some of the companies I've met over the last few days are investing in UK offshore wind. Yeah. First, because they want to create a great return, which is fabulous because it's a really good industry. But what they also said, which I thought was most interesting, was they want to do secondments, uh, knowledge transfers and so on, so they can bring the technology and the know-how from the UK, from our stormy uh, North Seas, uh, and bring them down to Thailand to help make the change in, in the energy supply here, which is really important. As I said, it's not just a climate crisis issue uh, or decarbonisation for the sake of it. You know, affordable, sustainable energy uh, is one of the most important things I think that the government of Thailand can generate for its population. Yeah, so that brings us to this important question because the financial sector can also contribute to the greener environment, the greener world. Right? Yes. So what are the challenges in sustainable finances yeah. that you're seeing? Well, uh, firstly, the history of London, for, for want of a better word, the capital markets of the UK based in the city, investing into Thailand are significant and, and strong. And uh, this uh, conference that we've organised today between the UK and Thailand financial services sector, you, you've got companies like Aberdeen, uh, Standard Chartered, um, HSBC and so on, who, who have for, for, for centuries been channelling international capital into Thailand. And one of the things we're developing very successfully in the UK are products such as sustainable bonds. Um, and a number of sovereign wealth uh, funds and other countries have been using London as a way to garner capital to then invest back in their economy. So providing liquidity to Thailand is probably the most important thing that the UK could do. Uh, second is the know-how, and the third is the sort of joint collaboration. The one thing you have got that we haven't got is a lot of sunlight. sunlight. And so floating offshore solar is an area where you're having huge success. So you know, how can we use some of those technologies back into the UK, where we do have some sun from time to time, uh, but how, how can we use those technologies in order to benefit our energy supply? Because the one thing we've realised over the last few years is it can't just be a single source, it has to be diversified to manage yeah. the different sort of peaks and troughs of demand. So we can work together. Right, so the interest is high. However, the infrastructure side, there are some disparities between the two because you're more advanced in terms of financial services. How can you bridge the gap between that? Well, I, do, I, do, I mean, I think the UK London, well, the London markets are, are bigger than the Thai stock markets, for sure. But actually, both um, economies, I think, have their own unique advantages uh, and compatibilities. It's one of the reasons why we're developing our enhanced trade partnership, so we can work out, you know, what's Thailand doing really, really well? Things like advanced manufacturing, f uh, floating uh, sort of solar in the sea and so on. What are we doing? Well, you know, offshore, offshore wind, AI and deep tech, and uh, how do we combine our forces? I mean, the really important thing is that we both keep our economies open to each other. So one of the things I, I regret a bit, and you, you touched on when you talked about sort of crises in the world, yeah. one of the areas that's not necessarily covered enough is a sort of t trend to sort of deglobalize. And some of that's necessary, but actually, you know, I've been working in this region for decades, and I remember going back to the, to the mid 90s when we had the phenomenal boom, um, and that was exemplified by very rapid and strong capital flows between countries, a strong flow of ideas and a strong flow of, of the people running those businesses and making those investments. So we really need to push on both sides, you know, continuing to try and bring down barriers to investment, you know, making sure our economy is properly regulated, so not over-regulating, and make sure that we're promoting people-to-people -people links, and that's what these sorts of events are all about. So what are some of the concrete steps that will be coming after this UK-Thailand conference? Yes, yeah. good. Well, I'm glad you asked that. Concrete because I love concrete things. Yes, <laughs> concrete things are key. We, uh, can tend, we, we totally tend to agree. be, you know, philosophical yes. in all of this. Too Sorry. much philosophy doesn't, doesn't, doesn't solve all the issues. I mean, I think the number of things uh, I, I'm keen for to come from here. First is closer collaboration on regulation when it comes to financial services. And actually, the UK government's allocated some funding specifically to sort of promote good dialogue. So how can we reduce investment barriers when it comes to UK firms investing in Thailand? That's a really important point. And how can we encourage more investment from Thailand into the UK? That's concrete, that's tough. And there are, you know, there are administrative issues, issues over sort of how you register your financial services business, you know, how capital is, is controlled and so on. You know, so a strong dialogue on that will have huge benefits for both sides. I think in other areas, um, we want to also have deep discussion. Um, areas such as defence, making sure that we're, we're fully aligned in terms of our defence industry, where we have some phenomenal products. How can we ensure the future security of Thailand through good collaboration there? And then in sort of commercial aspects such as healthcare, uh, we've got some great UK healthcare businesses operating in, in Thailand uh, and, and I'm keen to see them invest more 
and that means good collaboration with the authorities for you know, how do you regulate you know, new, new drugs coming onto the market. And actually that's a challenge for all of us, because I think if you go back a few years, you developed a, a, a pill for whatever it was, uh, then you had to test it thoroughly, you had to wait years to see yeah. whether it worked. The reality is now you're, you're looking at these um, specific gene-related therapies for us individually tailored to cure our cancers. It's amazing, um, developing them in the UK. But you, you can't have a five-year plan on that because it's you know just for you and it'll yeah. be too late. So how do we accelerate the processes right. for um, approvals and enable us to get more great medicines on the ground in countries like Thailand? So there's a lot to talk about, real, real concrete, Goals and hopefully later in the year we're going to we're going to have you know more uh, announcements in terms of uh, memorandums of understanding between different you know government departments and industries uh, and more minister-led initiatives to promote the UK and Thailand working more closely. Mm -hmm. Because both parties are going to sign an MOU this afternoon as well. That's going to be amazing. So that's between the export finance yes. arm and the, and the finance arm here. That's that's great. So we we we're 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 actually putting UK government capital behind uh, Thai businesses who use UK content. So it's a, it's a phenomenal opportunity. I mean, I, I would like to tell everyone in the world right. about UKEF. It's probably the best kept secret uh, of the British government. And, you know, we're, we're funding these businesses you know, based here, but with British technology when it comes to sort of space exploration, science and technology. Isn't that amazing? So I'm very excited about that. So as Prime Minister Sir Thai has traveled the world to sell his country. So now it's your turn to sell your country because you said you are a salesman. That's Thank your you. part. Well, thank you very much. I mean, you know, you've heard me talk about what the opportunities are in the UK. At the end of the day, uh, it comes down to a phenomenally stable structure for investment. I mean, the, the UK's financial services sector, for example, has been dominating the world for hundreds of years and it continues to do so. Uh, we're making enormous headway when it comes to developing the new technologies of the future. And one of the points I'm always struck by is out of the top 10 universities in, in the world, four of them are in the UK. It's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. Amazing. That. So the brain power. I wish I could of, go there. Well, well, you will. You will. I, I, I will encourage you to come to Durham, uh, where I went, which is a great. Who's going to take my position then? Well, I do. You, you. You, you can broadcast. <laughs> you can broadcast live from a UK university each morning. Right. Uh, so, the, but the people, the people in the UK are a phenomenal strength for us in terms of the IP we're creating for the new technological revolution. Uh, and then the UK is a very uh, attractive place to invest across a whole other range. Um, so you've got property, London properties are literally the leading international property destination of the world and we've had and this is something I'd like to just touch on in conclusion a really interesting what I call resorgimento of the, of the British regional capital so cities like Newcastle Birmingham Liverpool Manchester Belfast cities that when I was growing up uh, I think were struggling with, uh, with as they transformed from sort of post-industrial into services and now they're completely rejuvenating and you've got incredible tech hubs life science hubs you know, AI clean energy um, industries being created in these cities and the opportunities there are huge. They're phenomenal universities, uh, it's, it's good value proposition compared to some of the other more expensive yeah. parts of the UK and also great civic leadership, phenomenal mayors uh, and local government offices who really want to drive investment into their regions. So that's attractive for me because when I go and talk to investors I need to be able to show them you know, a suite of opportunities but they also have to know that when they get to the UK, they're going to get a warm reception. And they definitely do. Well, thank you so much. And here's Lord Dominic Johnson. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. No, you're brilliant. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>